the issue is, is this Shazare Borja, is it where the image that you see of Jesus, is that where it comes from? Is it a copy of that? Well, let's let's have a look at this. First, let's establish Cesare Borgia was born in 1475, said to be the son of Pope Alexander VI, the first cardinal to ever resign, uh, a powerful figure in Italy. He died in 1507. Pope Ale he was Pope Alexander died in 1503. That's important to note. And he was he had syphilis, and he was so disfigured that he wore a mask uh, uh, made of leather to cover his face. Uh, now. This is a painting by Giotto di Abandone. Abandone. Um, and this is the baptism of Christ. And it was painted in, uh, hold on back. It was painted in 1306. So this painting was painted before Cesare Borgia was born. And so is this painting. This is Christ, the Pantocrator, uh, 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 this is the one in Palermo. There's a, there, a lot of churches will have these, usually over the dome, uh, and it's an icon because, of course, it's Christ above all, which is what it means. And it's a very common thing. And this one was painted at 1148 A.D. It's obviously before he was. So the question is, because this one was from Palermo, and this one is, a, is Italian, the other one is Italian, is this just a uh, people painting what they've seen or what they've been told? You know, in their own in their own culture. In other words, is this a painting of what an Italian man would look like? Just so these are two paintings from from Egypt. Um, this is Christ and Saint Minas uh, from Egypt, or Saint Mina, as some people would know uh, him. And and basically, uh, this is sixth century. Uh, it's currently in the Louvre. So obviously, uh, they did not get this is not from an Italian man. And this is another um, Pantocator uh, from Mount Sinai. Uh, and it's also been shown at the Getty Museum. Uh, uh, and uh, this is also sixth century. And you'll notice that this is basically the same image that you saw that you see in the other images. So this can't be Cesare Borgia. And this is from the Basilica, this is from the Basilica of the Nativity in Bethlehem, and it was found uh, re recently, uh, fairly recently anyway, and it's the 12th century uh, icon of Jesus, of course, on the donkey, and a sim very similar image, and it's a mosaic. That's the only real reason that it's a little different at all. So here is a 4th century image from a catacomb in Rome, uh, possibly just prior to the Council of Nicaea, a uh, very similar image. This is a 12th century uh, image on a handkerchief of Jesus Christ. A uh, very similar image. This is the Shroud of Turin. And this is something you can go two ways with this. One, you can say that they you could you could say that they just had an image, an idea that was passed out over time, and they, they did the Shroud of Turin this way. Another one is you could say that they got it from the Shroud of Turin. Um, both of these are, or it could be, or it could be both. But the problem you run into is saying that this creates an issue with the shroud deniers, and there's a lot of evidence that rejects a lot of the things that were used to refute the shroud, including two of the of the key researchers of the shroud and the findings that they made about the about blood on the shroud and other things, uh, the, the 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 repair that they found that they were dating it with. Uh, but the issue is you have. Is that is that is that they have an, this image matches these later images like the one on the right, which of course is just a recreation to show how it fits over it. So the problem you run into is that if the shroud was invented in the 15, 14 or fifteen hundreds or something like that, uh, you have those paintings that are much much older, and they're producing that same image, and um, and. And the, the before, the after, and the here, and it just doesn't fit. And there is no way to technology that can, that can create a negative like that at that time. It would create a tremendous amount of heat and light. Even today, we we couldn't do it uh, with that amount of light. Uh, but we do know, we do have accounts to what Jesus looked like, though. From the Third Ecumenical Council, um, 
it is it was said that Christ, someone asked uh it said they saw a picture of Christ and they said and they said that, and they said that Christ had flowing hair um off to the side and wanted to know if that was the correct if that was correct the answer was no that he that is that is not correct because it is it has come down to us from people who knew Christ obviously not one generation or two generations apart but over time um, personally that he that he was about five foot two inch four five foot four, five foot four inches tall and the Romans had foot feet foot and inches so this is a, a reasonable uh, count and stature and had dark chestnut colored hair which is also somewhat reasonable because certain Semitic tribes do produce that um, and it was bound at the back and had a and he had a sparse beard beard so all of this is actually fairly consistent. It's fairly consistent with a lot of the, the, the similar images to that that we've seen, where it appeared his hair was bound at the back. Uh, the, the hair color is fairly close. Uh, this this actually placed because and there is some uh, importance about uh, about iconography, um, um, uh, because there's a lot of in the Bible about imagery. For instance, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, as it talks about in Colossians, and then in Romans it talks about we are to be formed in the uh, in the image of in the image of, of, of the son i.e jesus christ uh because because uh, we're ultimately all partakers of the divine nature well in the bible when you see image usually the word that's in the greek is icon well icon is uh, is, is icon so it's the word for icon so when you read that it's actually talking about the image or the icon of said thing and icons are really depictions of scripture, um, either of the glory and the majesty of Christ or, or things that are ex exist or are drawn out of scripture, sometimes stories, sometimes lessons. Uh, it is the pictorial gospel. Uh, and there's a connection to physical, visual things because of this idea of this image um, that, that, that were, they were spiritual things transcend out of them. Um, it's kind of like how Paul and Acts blessed handkerchiefs. Uh, I believe it's in Acts seventeen or maybe nineteen. I think it's seventeen, and people were people were healed by them because it wasn't Paul healing them. It was it was it was God working through that object that was healing people, uh, and it's uh, it's like in the Old Testament where they touched where, some, where, where bones were touched and something came to life, um, came back. A person came back to life. Um, because works these these relics and and things like that uh, uh, real things come out of them um, because because God works through many things so that's 